Today on Ham Radio q and I dip into the mailbag and answer your questions. So please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. So if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, February has certainly been a challenging month. Up here in northern Wisconsin, we received over 53 inches of snow last month alone and over 70 inches for the season. This is a far cry from what we usually are accustomed to, especially for a community that doesn't live within the Great Lakes snow belt. But we're all dug out and hopefully it will melt soon enough and we'll get outside to do some portable operations. Maybe in April, who knows, May or June. Uh, but enough of that. Uh, let's dig into these questions. I received plenty of great discussion resulting from the five easy steps to your ham radio license video. Thank you to everyone that uh, shared their experiences. You know, we do have a common experience with taking the license exam, but it's fascinating to hear the slightly different paths we all took to get there. So first off, Connor shares. Being a 15 year old ham, only a tech, I feel that the test is pretty easy. I studied the question pool with a group of people I took the test with and we all passed, some of them even leaving with their general licenses. Well, study groups are a great idea. Being young, you still have good study habits. It's always better to do it with a friend as you have a level of accountability. I did the same thing for my extra license. You know, three of us formed a group and worked together studying for the test. And all three of us passed on the first try. So thanks, Connor. You know, study groups really do work. One finger reminded me of a very helpful ham radio app. If you want to get your tax license, spend $25 on a two-year subscription to hamtestonline.com. And don't worry about the math questions unless you, you really like higher math. You'll pass or you'll get your money back. I hate math and I aced it. You know what, I heard some really good things about Ham Test Online, so I'm glad it worked for you. Thanks for the reminder. Photo Lab Guy has a little different experience. It's disappointing that technician class is not within 50 miles from where I live. That has been a turnoff for me. There are general and extra examinations, just nothing close for a technician. This all according to the ARR website. Well, that can be an obstacle. I'd contact the people running the test because they can just as easily administer a technician exam as they can the higher level ones. Also, the ARRL and W5YI groups aren't the only people that offer exams. There are also several regional volunteer exam coordinators. You may want to check if one of those are located close to you that can offer an exam. Uh, the link to a list of VECs can be found in the video description below. So after you pass the test, you're going to want to get a station up and running. MN asks, Hi, I'm a technician and will upgrade my license, eventually. Getting a base station or a mobile radio soon. Just not sure if I should get an HF, multiband capable of HF, or not worry about HF until I'm a general. He goes on to say, I like the idea of being able to communicate long distances with HF, but don't want to get the radio if there aren't technicians on the allowed HF frequencies. Are there techs, uh, many technicians on HF? Well, now this is a kind of a difficult question, but techs have voice privileges on 10 meter and um, on 10 meters and also CW privileges on 10, 15, 40, and 80 meters. When the band is open, there's a quite a bit of technician activity on the 10 meter band. But since we are at the bottom of the solar cycle, 10, the 10 meter band conditions have not been very good. So 10 meter activity has been sporadic at best. I think investing in an HF rig might be a good incentive to upgrade. Otherwise, maybe consider an HF rig that has six meter capabilities. There are a few budget-minded HF radios out there with six meters. And as a technician, you have full access to the six meter band. Plus six can be a lot of fun when that band opens up. So maybe give that a, give that a, nice, a shot. Moving along, Richard commented on my video about receiving slow scan television images from the International Space Station. Great video, Michael. Thanks for putting it out there. Uh, there's another package called RxSSTV that I found works wonders. It gives a much clearer image. Just do a Google search for it. It's 73 from KF5RHI. Hey, thanks for the recommendation. I looked at RxSSTV quickly and noticed it's receive only. 
but that makes it perfect for the International Space Station transmissions. Just a couple of quick things about RXSSTV. First, it uses the same engine as MMSSTV, created by JE3HHT. It's receive only, so there's no worry about accidental transmissions. And it has an adjustable um, digital signal processing settings, so you should be able to get you know, a clear image or picture. I did a side-by-side -side comparison of the two applications, and I'd say that the processing was marginally better with RX SSTV, but um, I didn't really do a lot of tweaking uh, with the DSP settings, so there's probably some room for improvement. If you don't need the ability to send SSTV images, uh, then certainly give RX SSTV a shot. Okay, last question. This one relates to WinLink or sending and receiving uh, emails via HF. Uh, David writes, so if I want to do this but don't want uh, the rest of the world to read my email and therefore uh, use crypto such as SSL, what license would I need and what band would I need to be set up in? Well, putting messages out on the air like this opens them up for casual interception or for interception and a casual viewing. So my first recommendation would be not to use this method for sending sensitive information. Also, using any time, type of cryptography to obscure your message on the amateur radio bands is not permitted in any way, shape, or form. Perhaps you know, a commercial or a marine radio license would allow for that purpose, but otherwise it's plain text only. Well, that's it for this month. Hopefully the snow will melt soon and uh, we can get back uh, outdoors. In the meantime, um, stay tuned for the next uh, episode. So, uh, we're going to build one of these. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. I'll pick out the best one for our next uh, Your Questions Answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. If you enjoyed this video, give me that big thumbs up. Maybe check out some of the others that are recommended alongside here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.